Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Tiyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa Welcome back to yet another spooky, creepy, un- enlightening, amazing episode of Mysterium After Dark. And tonight, um, it's an interesting time because, boys and girls, we're experiencing Mercury Retrograde. And what is Mercury Retrograde, might you ask? It's a very good question. For starters, I'd like to tell people that Mercury Retrograde is the time where everything goes to horseshit in your life. <laughs> I'm getting around. Um, the planet Mercury actually corresponds to the abilities of communication. And if the planet Mercury is conjunct, or if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, I mean, um, then basically it means that all forms of communication are pretty much doing what it's supposed to be. Like your contracts are working well, your meetings, your agreements, your electronics, everything is just working handy dandy. However, when Mercury retrograde happens, that means that the energies of Mercury are doing stuff it's not supposed to be doing. And what will end up happening is there will be a lot of miscommunications going around. Yes. And what that basically means to me is, hold on, Harry. Yeah, what does that mean? That actually means that, example, you're going to be expecting quite a few unexpected things from happening, like cancellations. You're going to be expecting things like uh, miscommunications, arguments, things that usually would take an hour will take the whole day. Things that will take you a whole day will take the whole week, so on and so forth. It's a never-ending cycle, especially during Mercury Retrograde. And all I can really tell people at the end of the day is that they should be patient because this is not something that lasts forever. This actually happens three times a year and it, in effect, 
uh, how do I say, will only last roughly for a month. But within that time, people ask me, well, what don't you do during Mercury Retrograde? Just so you know, it starts officially tomorrow and it ends end of, thank you, no standing, okay, <laughs> it ends end of, uh, what the hell, <laughs> it ends end of March, but to play it safe, I would say, see, even the iPod's having Mercury Retrograde Syndrome right now, it ends end of March, and as a result, um, I would say it's safest to start doing what you do around April. Now, what aren't you supposed to do during Mercury Retrograde? Might you ask? Well, we'll say for starters, you don't sign contracts because you might find yourself stuck. It's something you don't want to do. Secondly, you don't buy electronics because these are communication devices. You're likely to get a lemon, in other words. And that actually happened to me. I'm talking to my guest, our special guest tonight. And um, basically, you could find yourself buying the most awesome uh, S10 only to find out it's one of those phones that go boom in your hand. <laughs> so this is not really the best time for you to buy electronics. Uh, now, what are you supposed to do during retrograde? Because you can't necessarily just sit around all month doing nothing, blaming it on the retrograde. For starters, anything that starts with the word re. Relax, reconnect, reevaluate, reconsider, reflect, um, redo your room. <laughs> anything that starts with the word re. Travel's actually very fun too during Mercury Retrograde. So uh, that being said, I would actually invite you all to the idea of pondering what you can do within the Mercury Retrograde period. Now, another thing I'll share with you though is that a secret hack that I found about Mercury Retrograde is do things that you normally would fail at. Why? Because Mercury Retrograde doesn't necessarily mean everything's going to go to shit. It actually just means that which can go wrong will go wrong. So, for example, naturally, you usually strike out every time you ask a person out on a date. That's normal. So during Mercury Retrograde, you might actually get a yes. You know what I mean? That happened to me. <laughs> I asked my wife out during Mercury Retrograde, and the rest is history. <laughs> so that being said, um, I'm just welcoming, welcoming you all to the show tonight. Uh, it's going to be a pretty fun night tonight for us all because... All the people that I wanted originally to guest on the show did not show up. <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to adapt. And we have to find a way to accommodate people that, you know, could bring quality to the show. And th that being said, there's no other better than a dear student of mine who's proven her mettle time and time again. She will be guesting for us tonight. She is a very valued and talented tarot reader within the Mysterium community. More importantly, she is into crystals and a lot of other things to say she only does tarot and crystals is like saying that uh, I only read tarot cards. <laughs> uh, it's without further ado that I would like to welcome to our show tonight my special guest, the ever so talented Miss Roland Carlos. Welcome to the show, Roland. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. So welcome to Mysterium After Dark. So yes, these are one of the creatures we find after dark here in Mysterium. Roland has a very interesting story to tell us. And first and foremost, I'd like to ask you, how long have you been doing tarot readings for? Okay, so that's actually a tricky thing for me to answer uh -huh. because I did get into cartomancy in general when I was around give or take 14 or 15, but I did not start with a tarot deck. What did you start with? It wasn't actually a deck that was meant for divination. It's called the Tailcraft deck. <laughs> Tailcraft, okay, yeah. <laughs> I right. got it uh, from a workshop uh -huh. where um, it's supposed to be your guide on how to make your own I stories. I know Tailcraft is, yes. Uh -huh, it's an yeah. amazing thing, actually. Yeah, and um, I just couldn't use it for its own purpose. I preferred writing my own stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, I was just looking at the cards, and at that time, I already knew what tarot was. And I was thinking, these sort of work like tarot cards, and then that's what I've been using. When I was around 16 or 17, I got my first tarot deck, and ever since then, that's sort of when I did my self-study prior to entering Mysterium. Okay, and how do you, and basically, what's your, one of your ideologies as a tarot reader nowadays? My ideologies? People tend to think that it's technical, mm -hmm. difficult, tricky to um, understand, tricky to learn. Actually, I think of it as more of a form of introspection. Introspection? What do you mean by that? Um, for me, the cards should speak like you, should like speak you. with you, but mm -hmm. they don't speak for you. Okay. okay. They don't speak for you, and why don't they see? Mercury retrograde. <laughs> why don't they speak for you? I 
the cards, you can buy a deck, get the booklet that comes with it, it'll tell you the meanings, but how you work with the meanings, you're not gonna get it from that. It's all gonna come with how you understand mm -hmm. the cards, with how you understand the situation, and how you find a connection between them. Okay, so let's show our viewers on Facebook Live what it's like for you to draw a card. Okay, now draw one card for me, Roland, to talk about this month, especially with Mercury Retrograde. What do I have to look forward to and what should I be careful for? If you guys want to ask Roland questions, you may ask us on Facebook Live um, on both shows, especially on the Facebook Live program. Everybody's going to get to see how Roland reads the cards. So Roland, please draw a card. Okay, so the card that I got for you is Passion Ignited. Okay. Whatever you're gonna do, make sure that it's something that you really want to do. It's something from your passion. Don't do it just for the sake of completing it or meeting other people's expectations. You're gonna have to be passionate about so, it. It's coming from the real. That is so awesome. So from all the tarot decks you have, what is your favorite? <laughs> okay. Uh, for the record, I do collect a lot of decks. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah. I know that. I okay. know that from experience. Okay. <laughs> I I mainly work with this one. This is the Witch's Tarot deck. Cool. I got it for it. It was a uh, gift for myself for my twentieth birthday. Uh huh. Um, why I like it? It just speaks to me, and I find that it's. I call it the talkative deck. Talkative deck. Yeah, because with some decks, for example, the classic Rider White, I can see the symbolisms but I couldn't articulate the messages. Mm -hmm. With these, I feel like they just speak to me and then I can speak on behalf of them, sort of. And then I also use this one, the John Holland um, Psychic Tarot Oracle deck. You go, I'm, thank you for calling it an Oracle deck. <laughs> the people say, no, it's a tarot deck. No, it's, it's an Oracle deck. It's, not. it's an Oracle deck. Uh -huh. no. um, just because uh, it's... I really brought it for this purpose because, you know, it's great for beginners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's easy to interpret. Uh -huh. And then one that I leave at home mostly because I use it for myself is the one that you gave me. Yes. <laughs> the steampunk tarot deck. <laughs> all right. So for all the people tuning in right now using the talkative deck, oh, okay. what can you say to them? All right. Everyone, Mysterium's, Roland is a Mysterium certified tarot reader and available for readings at the Mysterium Learning Center by appointment Monday to Friday. Just text us at 0916-551-1824 and you can experience tarot with her either in person or via Skype. So, what's the card for everyone? <laughs> Ten of Swords. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> it's the perfect card. Hello. Ten of Swords. Okay. Um, especially for this Mercury Retrogate, you know, um, we tend to... Especially for those who have problems, we tend to relapse into them yeah. during the Mercury Retrogate. Um, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me ten times and stab me ten times in the back. You're asking for it. You're making your own problems. So, yeah. <laughs> so Roland's basically telling everybody, don't be stupid. <laughs> yeah, because like, okay, how do you as a practitioner deal with Mercury Retrogrades? Probably people expect that I have some sort of ritual for mm -hmm. it, but I actually don't. Mm -hmm. uh, Generally, I don't use social media that much. Mm -hmm. I tend to stay away from it. It's bad um, for you. It's bad. <laughs> but I do tend to sit down and meditate more and really connect with decks, especially ones I haven't been using in a while mm -hmm. because I find that they'll have um, some messages for me. <laughs> All right, Milton Croft is tuning in right now. First time here. Welcome to the show, Milton. And for the rules, if you want to ask me or Roland anything, any, about anything tonight, tonight is a tarot special, so you guys can pretty much ask us questions about the tarot or ask us to draw cards for you as long as you are polite. So that being said, um, since it's the first time for Milton, uh, let's do a favor. Let's draw him a card. And the card you got is the Queen of Coins. So what does this mean? This means to me that somebody without any monetary um, inclinations, this thing is just so damn slippery, <laughs> without any monetary inclinations is going to be more inclined to helping you with a passion project of yours because they believe in you. So, hi Julianne, welcome to the show. This is the Tarot Thursdays Mysterium After Dark joint episode because we're not having a Tarot Thursdays this weekend. Okay, so for Milton, draw something from the Tarot of the Goddard. <laughs> the God <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that one. Draw that one. Okay. The Oracle deck. Hi, Christian. Hey, Meg. Nice to see you. So for Milton, you mm -hmm. got the Third Eye Chakra card. The Third Eye. The <laughs> Third Eye. The Third Eye. Um, trust your intuition and be open to new learnings. Right, welcome to the show. Thank God. <laughs> you know what? No more now. 
Take it away. <laughs> like six times this thing falling. I don't want it anymore. Okay, so um, basically, yeah, that's... Hi, Joel. Nice to see you. If you guys are just tuning in, we are having a special guest tonight in the form of uh, Roland Carlos. You can actually use your computer and share on your social media there if you'd like, if you believe in it. Some people don't. They think it's work of the devil. <laughs> okay, yeah, but then, then again, um, hi, Ellie. A lot of interesting people watching the show. Megan, all the way from the East Coast in the United States, actually woke up for this because somebody told her that there would be no tarot thursdays tonight and yeah i'm on the air right now too uh, i'm going to be answering some questions shortly we're just doing a bit of social media uh, uh pimping out ellie draw a card for me roland <laughs> ellie's asking for a card so draw a card from the talkative tarot talkative tarot talkative tarot, talkative tarot. so hello ellie <laughs> missouri yeah yeah uh megan's from missouri okay. missouri missouri <laughs> Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> Again, okay. I wonder why. Um, uh, for me, especially with Mercury Retrograde, this isn't always just about the money. It's uh -huh. about um, really um, taking a step back mm -hmm. and looking at the things that you have. Because especially Mercury Retrograde, people tend to be moody, feel like, uh, wow, the world is against me. Mm -hmm. It's It's a good time for you to reassess the things that you have so that you can see them in a brighter perspective. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, so guys, you know, be thankful for the things you have. I mean, like a, a lot of things, you can always complain about all the problems in your life if you want to, but then, you know, it's gratitude that actually manifests things. Okay, so tell me more about yourself. Are you a college graduate? I am not. Oh, wow, that's amazing. How did a girl this brilliant end up not coming from college? Okay, <laughs> and aside from everything creepy, what else do you do for a living? I am actually a makeup artist. Wow, she's a makeup artist. Were you trained by the black belt Cecil? Sadly, no. Not yet, but soon. Yet. It's soon. soon. Hello, Melissa Love from Australia. And Joel Cruz, can you draw a card for me as well? Okay, Joel, I will draw a card for you. And your card is the Four of Cups. It shows to us here that uh, don't compromise. It's important that you don't compromise. You're a makeup artist. Yeah. How come I you never offered to do my makeup? You don't need it. You look great. <laughs> no, why did you make me look like a zombie? I'd like to be more scary. I mean, I already have the Pacino eyes. All right, so what? why did you get into makeup artistry? Okay, how did I get into it? Um, so funny thing is, uh, when I was younger, I was really obsessed with having my life planned out for me. Mm -hmm. um, and wow, I wanted to be a lawyer or a psychologist, you know, the, the fancy stuff. Yeah. And uh, just when I was in fourth year high school, when mm -hmm. I should have everything figured out, everyone was taking college exams and I just sat there like, wow, I actually don't know what I want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just fell into this state of, I don't want to call it depression, but um, yeah, I needed an outlet. Mm -hmm. And when I would get home from school, I would just you know play around with makeup and I found that it was really therapeutic for mm -hmm. me. Like it was more than just dolling up. It was an outlet for me to express myself. And then I, uh, I did go to college for the record. I took up fine arts. You did? It was just yeah. like, cool. <laughs> I took fine arts, but... I found that I'm someone who learns by doing, mm -hmm. and I just wasn't, you know, growing. And um, I sort of believe that, but by pagtipilitan sarili mo in a place where you're not growing. So I left college, picket mata cross fingers, mm -hmm. and that's why I sort of started soul searching, doing different things for a living. <laughs> All right, we have two foreigners who would like cards from you. One of them is one of my. Uh, very famous top fans, Miss Megan O'Donnell. I love a card, please, and thank you. She's calling all the way from Missouri. Megan, hi. Megan, yeah, I think you've come across each other in the yeah. chat while watching Tarot Thursdays. Megan, for you, the card that I got is the Two of Swords reversed. Oh, there you go. Um, sometimes you have to step away from, especially if you're having dilemma mm -hmm. or decisions that you're trying to if you're trying to make a big decision, sometimes you gotta step back because mm -hmm. only then will you see that beyond the two things you're comparing, there's actually a wider perspective behind you. So. And this one is for, um, hey, Megan's also a makeup artist. Yeah, have something <laughs> going on. Cool. Um, and uh, this is from Melissa Love from Australia. May Hi, I please Melissa. have a card drawn for me? Thank you. Accelerated motion. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a go sign for you, um, this could be it. So. Um, try not to overthink your situation. Don't hesitate. 
And if you feel like it's the right path for you, then by all means, what's stopping you? All right, I just shifted the camera and it's on me. And I'm going to answer some cards because it's a tarot special tonight. We'll just F around tonight since we don't really have much planned. We're going to talk a bit about our practices in a bit. But then, of course, Lisa Galio di Malatulok. Please pick a card for me. Thank you. The magician, you are good enough. You have enough ability in you to make it happen. So um, don't doubt yourself. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hey, Mary Macaroni, nice to see you. Uh, also, this is for Clarice Goyena. Please pick a card for me. Thank you. Four of coins reverse. Do not be afraid to invest your time, energy, and effort right now into what you're doing because it will pay off a hundredfold. Uh, Ayatina Chan, may I please have a card drawn for me as well? Sure, Ayatia Chan, and that is the Queen of Cups, and it means that you need to pay attention to how you feel. Your feelings right now are very, very important, and as a result of this, you need to follow where your feelings are telling you to go. Okay, so guys and girls, your feelings matter. Okay, um, so Roland, yes. are you? What are you doing? You're going on social media. You're uh, trying to share. Like, yeah, what is yeah. this social media thing? Yes. All right, but it's 8 to 1 on the clock. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our first break. We're going to be back after five minutes. You're on the air right now with Rob, with the special guest tonight, Miss Roland Carlos, Rare Kindlings. And if you want a tarot reading with her, send a message. But the Facebook live cast will still be wide open. Uh, see you in five minutes. Harry, take it away. Play music all day long. Streaming worldwide. That's the future of radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high quality, yet budget friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, copywriters, and graphic artists, we can help you build your podcast from planning, post production, and platform submission. Using only cutting edge software and studio equipment, we are here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send us an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call us at 209-505-5693 Transource Media Transforming businesses through the power of multimedia Darating na ba si The One? Baka naman oras ng yumaman Pwede ring lumevel up ang inyong career Tara na't alamin ang inyong kapalaran sa dikta ng mga bituin Kasama ang eksperto sa usapang tadhana na si Madam Venus. Madam Venus at your service. Madam Venus at your service. Tuwing Huwebes, alas 9 hanggang alas 11 ng gabi. At Sabado, alas 6 hanggang alas 8 ng gabi. Madam Venus at your service. Madam Venus at your service. Dito lang yan sa V81 Radio. Heto na ang programa para sa inyo. Para sa mga OFW. Programong tutulong at tutugon sa inyong mga lungkot at problema para sa mga OFW. Programong mag-aalis ng homesick sa mga bayaning gaya ninyo para sa mga OFW. Sa iba't ibang dakuman ng mundo, maghahatid ng tuwa at saya sa bawat Pilipino para sa mga OFW. Maglilingkod para sa OFW. OFW Online. OFW Online Mapapakinggan tuwing Martes at Merkules alas 7 ng gabi at tuwing Sabado at Linggo alas 3 ng hapon kasama sina Cap Marvin at Papa Tolitz OFW Online OFW Online Kaya mga kababayan, tutok na! Dito lang yan sa V81 Radio Nagahanit saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Tiyak ito'y iyong Hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang Nagpapasaya sa
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with another action-packed episode of Mysterium After Dark. <laughs> and tonight, we're here with Ellie, my dear... No, no, not Ellie. We're here with Roland. See, I'm so effed in the head. And she's one of my dearest students in the world. And we're doing a, all about tarot. Okay, um, you just recently did an event with Mysterium for uh, Chinese New Year, right? Yeah, and thank you very much, Arnetta Center, for having us. That was a lot of fun. Um... Did you have any mutant clients <laughs> that appeared? <laughs> no. Oh wait, uh, there, wait, there you go. Okay, uh, I actually had um, I don't want to call them weird, but an unusual crowd <laughs> during uh -huh. the Arnetta gig. Um, a lot of people were asking things like, "When am I gonna die?" <laughs> what? People actually asked that? Someone actually did ask me that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of a stressful. Um, and then you're given like 10, 15 minutes to read for people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's part of the public things that we do, especially as readers that, you know, every now and then when we do gigs, we open the door for anybody who'd have cre creepy, crawly questions. Hi, hi, mom. Nice to see you tuning in. So that being said, um, craziest tarot experience you've ever had in your life. Okay, so <laughs> there's this client of mine that we, we started out great. Um, she was one of my first clients. Mm -hmm. um, and she was my suke for a while. And then it started out with like, like questions like, um, what do I see in her career? And then it just got darker and creepier because she was already asking me, you know, can you... It was outside of Tara already. She was asking me, could you do a spell to curse someone <laughs> that okay. I was actually... I used to read for. Um, basically, um, her mindset was, if you can't see me having a future with this person romantically, I'd want them to be cursed. That's horrible. Yeah, so that was... So clients like that even exist for you as well? Absolutely. <laughs> good, good grief. My gosh, and bad news today that prodigy singer Keith Flint dies at age 49. I guess we're not going to be having any more fire starter music. That kind of knocks my day. Hey, Zenoma, nice to see you. Mom, thanks for tuning in. If you're just tuning in right now, we have Ro uh, Roland on the line. Um, so far, what was the most meaningful experience you ever had for the tarot? For myself or with a client? Uh, either or. For myself, um, I'm, I use, I, well, I still sort of am sort of the hardest critic for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to just judge how I saw my readings. I never thought I was good enough. And basically, when I joined Mysterium, I, I, here's a funny story. When... The actual day of the first day of tarot class, I did a crash course review of all the cards. I was st sort of memorizing, this card means this, this card means this. And then when the class actually started, you asked, do you still have that booklet? And it's like, yeah, I still have it. Throw it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's sort of uh, that sort of set the tone for me that how we do readings in Mysterium, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, probably the only wrong way is if you're not doing it in your essence. There you go. Megan O'Donnell, fellow uh, makeup artist from halfway around the world, is asking you, I just changed jobs. Can I get a card for my makeup artistry and creativity? Please and thank you. Okay. So this is for your um, career and for your creativity. Yeah, it's about um, the whole makeup artistry yep. thing. Uh, you got the three of cups. Wow. So I would... Somebody's uh, going to be having fun. <laughs> um... So, you know, enjoy this time. Mm -hmm. um, take a break, a much-needed break. Mm -hmm. And it may be a great time for you to get involved with a community, especially where you want to shift. Um, try to get some friends, sort of um, sort of test the waters. There you go. Build bridges. All right, I'm shifting view here back to my ever-so-ugly face. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be asking questions from my point of view. <gasps> And then you can ask me anything you'd like. Just remember, please and thank you are the magic words. And Megan is saying thank you to Roland You're from welcome, one Megan. makeup artist to another. Noreen, I left my job going back to my previous job. Is this the right move? Uh, okay, Noreen, please and thank you. And I will answer for you. No, please. No, thank you. No answer. Right, Roland? Yes. All right. Because like the thing, like. Of, yeah, yeah. People like so we're doing this for free. It's not like we have to do this. I mean, like, um, Megan said, please and thank you at the end. So of course, she deserves special privileges. Now. We don't mind reading the cards for you guys, but then if you're gonna ask, please ask with courtesy. All right. So if anybody else wants to ask questions, I am using the golden thread tarot tonight, and Roland and I are gonna be talking more about tarot. You know, um, I wanted to ask aside from reading. 
Uh, do you have any particular philosophy that you follow? Like you're Buddhist, or you're Satanist, or you, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what are you? Um, so my spiritual journey has been interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a background, my family is sort of split into two. Uh-huh. So there are the people who are traditional pre-colonial spiritista. Yep. So nature worshippers. Um, believing in energies and canto, more then, power. Uh, and then when, uh, when the Spanish came, um, they killed it all. <laughs> they killed um, it all. Part of the family, well, most of it um, became, you know, Catholic Sarado. Yeah, <laughs> um, out of fear most of the time. Yeah. So, um, my mom, when she raised us in Manila, she sort of gave us a crash course through the different philosophies of different religions, mm-hmm. and sort of, you know, um, children here the different philosophies pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And um, I went through a journey of uh, from Catholic, agnostic to um, long story short, I'm a pagan right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> pagan, and um, I'm not gonna specify which branch because I feel like it's just such a vast um, practice, and you know why stick with one? <laughs> there you go. It's interesting. Well, more power to you on that. Got some questions on the chat line. We have good evening. I'm planning to franchise our business. Want to know how successful that will be, please? Two of swords, too much analysis equals paralysis. Just do it. And don't ask for permission, ask forgiveness. Okay, Jelly Sing, watching well on the MRT. Mind your phone. Somebody might run after it. Please pick a card for you. Um, you have to learn to say no to people, Jay. It's a bit too accommodating. <laughs> don't you think? Okay, yeah. Tina Partosa, card for me, please. Financial career. There you go. We have four of cups reverse, meaning you do not compromise. Please do not compromise right now. Don't let people, you know dictate what you want you know what you want go for it hi guys can you draw a card for me please thank you uh this is for gg malaya what card did you get roland okay so the card that i got for you is fulfillment of wishes there you go so good news for you if there's something you've been wanting to manifest um luck is on your side all right. Well, in your favor. Okay, uh, Katniss Everdeen. That's really cool. <laughs> All right. Um, Hannah Basolia. May I please have a card from my partner, please? Thank you, sure, for your partner. More power for your partner. They, you guys need to get away from toxic elements in your life right now. The Six of course, Swords shows to us that right now you may be surrounding yourself with too much garbage and you need to sometimes burn that garbage. So, yeah, back to the show. Okay. Um, Here's a question. Do you have somebody who reads the tarot for you? No, I actually don't. <laughs> That's interesting, don't you think? Okay. Dustin, John, Surio, Marte. Please pick a card for me and my partner. Rob, Sir Rob, thanks. And more power. Nine of swords. No, eight of swords reversed. You're going to be freeing yourself out of your uh, limitations very, very soon. Tina Partosa. Thanks, guys. I have a great week ahead. Um, Martina Badibai. Bye-bye. Card for personal career. Thank you. Remember, say please, Martina. And you did. Actually, career is not the concern. It's love life right now. A lot of love is coming your way. So nobody reads a card for you? Uh, no, actually. Why not? You're you just scary. It's like, no, you read the cards <laughs> for me. Lacey Dacula. I thought you said it said, I thought it said Lady Dracula. I'm like, oh, what a cool name. A card for me, please. You're Lacey. King of Cups, meaning that somebody's going to be emotionally vulnerable to you really, really soon. Okay, so let's go back to you. Um... What's your dream deck so far? Lumina. The, 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 you mean the one I got before <laughs> you did? <laughs> the Lumina Tarot. No, I, I messaged the seller and she said, oh, someone already served it. But if they pass uh, p- pass on it, um, you'll be the next in line. Mm-hmm. And then lo and behold, I see you at Mysterium. Hey, Roland, check out this deck. And, oh. oh, you're the one who got it. You it's jerk. You. <laughs> <laughs> Tin Olano. Hello, Rob. Please pick a card for me. This is for you. And this is the Six of Cups Reverse, meaning that you're really good at taking care of people. But you don't take care of yourself enough, so keep that in mind. Okay, um, Hannah Mantaring. Hello, Sir Rob. Please pick a card for me finance and career. Uh, boundaries are very important. JJ Mabanya, card for me, please, and thank you. You're gonna get what you want, but make sure you want what you get. So, aside from the Lumina, which else would you like? That's not. There's actually a deck. Did I show you the the, the true black true tarot? Black tarot. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for that one, but it's like seems to be pretty difficult to get your hands on. Yeah, and I know they're gonna be reprinting it because the hierophant card was misspelled. Huh? Yeah. So um, the first run was. Yeah. <laughs> holy crap! I mean, it wasn't a major thing. It was just the E and the I were switched places. But that's like, <laughs> isn't that like just a small thing? The deck is what matters. Yeah. But did people actually complain about it? Um, yeah, there were some who wanted, you know, 
to have uh, the correct cards sent to them, and others were like, yeah, you know, it adds to the personality of the deck. Why not? Sheesh. <laughs> My gosh, because like that's actually one deck that I've been really eyeing for a while. But um, unfortunately, I am kind of burned by kickstarting decks. Mm-hmm. I've had decks that I kickstarted that uh, un- what ended up, ended up like just losing money. So since then, I've been kind of like uh, I'll buy it when it's really like available and accountable. There was a deck that was already available to mm-hmm. some people, uh-huh. and some people were, were able to get it, and then eventually the creator just flaked out. Uh, which one was that? Um, Ethereal Visions. <laughs> Ethereal Visions. I have not heard of that deck. It's pretty, but I find that it's a little too feminine. Fairy theme. Sorry. No sound, guys? Hold on. You guys can't hear me? Hannah, can you hear me? Let's see this, okay? Maybe you're just speaking too lightly. Hello, Hannah, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, so, okay, let's go back to you. All right. Uh, do you ever say no to clients? I have a hard time doing that, but yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Especially when I really hate it. When clients become too dependent on me, you you you'd think that it's great for me because you know money is money. Mm-hmm. They keep asking me for readings, and sometimes I just have to um, sort of set a boundary. You know, you just had a reading with me. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll get in touch with you when I think that you need it. You mm-hmm. know? Some people become too ob- obsessed with. Yeah, because an, an observation I had sometimes with clients at times is. Uh, Sometimes they're not looking for a reading. Sometimes they're looking for somebody to blame for their own misery. Haven't you observed that? That like, you know, they keep going to you for readings because when things go wrong, they want to be able to blame you. No, you said that this was going to happen. Like I had one client of mine, I won't mention their name. Um, She asked me, so when am I going to get a boyfriend? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, the cards show probably in like a six month. I want an exact date. So I was like, uh, I don't give exactly. No, but give me one. I was like, all right, like uh, October 31, more or less. Around By that time, you should have in a relationship. And woe and behold, this client on October 31 at 11.59 p.m. At exactly mid- midnight, she messaged me and she said, ha, you were wrong. See? And I'm like, you know, if you already think that the reading's not going to work, then why bother purchasing it? You know, you're just looking for somebody to blame for your own crap. Okay, Ellie, our friend Ellie. Um, was there a time you guys had a hard time reading a person because they were unreadable? Thank you. Oh, I'm going to answer this next. Please share. Oh, okay. Unreadable as in I can't see anything with no, them? No, it's like they're, they're yeah, just, uh, just unreadable. That's what she says. Yeah, absolutely. I've had that issue, especially when I was starting out with my online readings. <coughs> uh-huh. Um. There are just some times where I look at the cards and I'm thinking, uh, but I have a niece who's also starting to be interested in tower. She would watch me doing my sessions, and then sometimes she'd see me doing this on my table uh-huh. and saying, "Face palming." <laughs> and then I say, "Ano future ni tong taong to?" <laughs> um, and um, here's the thing: more often than not, when you can't see anything with a client, I find that it's because they're really indecisive and they don't know what they want. For example, there was someone uh, asking about their relationship. What do I see in the next year? Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't see anything. And then it turns out, here's what they said. So, I have an ex. Is he coming back? There's someone I'm interested in. Do we have a potential together? Well, I'm currently dating someone. Are we going to last? So, girl, what they're, do you want? They're jumping at so many pro- uh-huh, possible yeah. prospects. Jeez. So, yeah, that, that, that's actually a very good question, Ellie, that you're asking. That, like, have you ever had Jesus, <laughs> have you ever had somebody unreadable? Like, in my own case, sorry, this is kind of weird. Um, in my... What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mercury Retrograde, leave us alone! Okay. In my own case, um, there was somebody that I found unreadable, not because they were unreadable. It's that I was just too starstruck when I was reading for the person that I just completely choked because I didn't want to get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was like, uh, I mean, this was somebody I really, really looked up to. And as a result, uh, I wasn't too good in the reading. Then I just really meditated on it and said, no, next time I read for this individual, I'm going to swing for defenses. And woe and behold, um, not too much later, I was given an opportunity to read for this person again. And um, I really looked up to this guy a lot, uh, even still do. And um, it was so interesting that the reading lasted two and a half hours. And he really said, you know, everything you said was completely spot on. I don't know what's different. The last time it wasn't that good, but this time everything was to the T. And he even tipped me extra for it. So so sometimes you guys have the tendency of uh, shooting yourself in the foot if you focus too much on being right. But if you just focus on doing it and not caring of the result, 
then the message that they need to hear will come out. But if you're like, oh no, I gotta get this right. I'm reading for like, uh, I'm reading for my idol, my, my, my college crush, what's gonna happen? Then you're likely to really bomb it badly. So uh, that being said, very good question, Ellie. Um, now, what was the most fulfilling reading that you have ever had, Roland? Do you remember? Um, okay, so there's this client of mine. Um, so she started out as someone else's client. Mm -hmm. And um, for some reason, she just didn't feel like she resonated with this client anymore. So uh, with this reader anymore, rather. And then uh, she was referred to me by someone else who had a reading with me. Uh -huh. And wow, she's just the best client I've had because first of all, she has experience with uh, tarot. So she doesn't ask, you know, stupid questions out of lack of a better term. So she knows how to phrase her questions. She's mm -hmm. a delight to work with. But I, what I really love about her is she respects and appreciates me as a person, as Roland, the individual, and not just as... An that, object. <laughs> yeah. Not just as a service provider. Yeah, that's actually a very uncommon... That's a very common thing that, like, mm -hmm. I've observed this that a lot of people have the tendency of just treating us readers as if we're, like, some sort of, like... Well, uh, it's like, we're not worthy of... Sit down, where are you? What am I reading? You know what I mean? It's like, hey, dude, <laughs> we're people. <laughs> you know, I mean... um. That's why, like, especially, like, sometimes that I've observed that, like, they treat us the same way they treat, like, janitors. And, you know, janitors keep our places clean. So it says a lot on how a person treats a reader. Like, one of the things that we teach in Mysterium is that, you know, respect the reader's time. And have you ever had clients do that? That, like, they take a crap on your time? Absolutely. Especially when I wasn't with Mysterium mm -hmm. and I just didn't know how to say no. Mm -hmm. And there was this client, she would call me at, God, three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I would try to nicely say, you know, um, maybe you need to sleep, uh, mm -hmm. s uh, sleep on this, mm -hmm. and we can talk about it in the morning. Then she's gonna cry. You don't care about my feelings. Yeah, that that, that actually shows some, sometimes the abusiveness of certain clientele. Um, I'm not saying that all clients are bad, but there are out there, and um, people like me and Roland have actually what's the word um, experienced this. Yeah, okay. So when we're sharing this, this is us telling you don't make the same mistakes. Like. I remember one client of mine, he posed as a friend, but he was basically just using it because every time he wanted to ask a stupid question, he'd be like, hey, Robert, can you look into the cards and ask me, is this happening? No, no courtesy of time. He'd call it midnight and he'd ask me questions and he wasn't even paying me for it. So, you know, that being said, boundaries are always important. So, yeah, um, we're going to go back to the reading segment because I know that's what you guys want. Um, Roland, I'm going to do you a favor. Why don't you ask me a question and I'm going to draw a card for you. Why not? If you're tuning in, ask your questions here live on the air. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get specific with this. At yes. least with Bring um, it on. With my career mm -hmm. as a reader, as a practitioner. Mm -hmm. Um where's wh where's wh where can this take me? <laughs> How all far right. can it take me? You can go all the way to the top. You could make your you could make your own Gordon Ramsay. In other words, there's room for a lot of legends out there. And you could make it. The thing is this. Are you your own worst enemy? I am. Okay, there you go. So you got to beat that enemy first. But yes, definitely. Hello, Anna Marie Cruz. Hello, Jay. Hello, Melissa Love. Nice to see you guys. You three girls ask me a question live. We're using the Golden Tarot. Because now watch. watch. We're at seven people tuning in on the Facebook Live. But the minute people know we're actually sharing the show. You're going to act. I'm reading now. People are going to Now we're at eight. That's going to hit ten in exactly three, two, three. One. <laughs> just kidding around. Okay, like another question, because we're just going to play with the deck for the meantime. Humor me. <laughs> okay, I know. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> well, a little bit of vulnerability will go a long way. <laughs> you got to, oh. yeah, in other words, you got to be able to show some vulnerability in order for things to work out between you and your significant others. Yes, when she says humor me, she's saying love life. Okay. And you know, it's funny. You know, haven't you noticed that, like, sometimes you can literally predict what a client's going to ask? Like, let me guess. You're going to ask about career or love life. <gasps> How did you know? It's like, well, because that's what like 99% of the people ask when they're tuning in. That's actually interesting. I'm going to share something about that. So um, someone came to me and mm -hmm. then she had a list of questions. And then while I was reading, I just had to close my deck mm -hmm. and then listen to her. Mm -hmm. I said, this isn't really what you want to ask, is it? <laughs> Sometimes you need to do that. Like you can tell when they have a bigger concern. Like, like, you know, like, basically, they're sizing you up. They're like, 
Yeah, um, I, I have a question. Tell me about general reading. I'm like, ah, yeah, right. I wasn't born yesterday. You're just wondering, can you trust me enough with your question? That's why confidentiality is very important with your clients because if they know you're going to keep your mouth shut, then they're going to be more open to you and trust you more. But that's actually very important too for your readers out there that you should never violate the trust of your clients. I mean, like, um, I don't mention any names of the people that I'm talking about, especially when giving anecdotes. I won't say, oh no, uh, Linda said this at this time. I mean, that's taboo. So if you're having readings, uh, hi, Kulas. Um, if you're having readings with somebody or if you're reading for somebody, always respect their privacy. I mean, like I tell them, I said, nobody will ever get the information of a reading from me because that's just the be best courtesy. Melissa Love, I was already lucky enough to have a card drawn from you. Don't want to be greedy and take away from someone else. Melissa, because of that, I will draw you a card. Strength reversed, you will be learning something new. Uh, it's going to be something informal, but it will add to your, your knowledge base. So more power to you there. Okay, yeah, pwedeng ask for card, shift career po, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you need to go where you're valued, jelly sing. You really do. Because right now, wherever you're valued, people don't, wherever you are, people don't show you your true value. So more power to that. Go where you're appreciated, not tolerated. And there Mysterium you go, there you go, yeah. <laughs> Because here in Mysterium, we appreciate all walks of life. But remember, don't test that. <laughs> we have our limits. You know what I mean? It's like the limits of, of eccentricity we can tolerate is very high. But if we get to the point that we don't want to tolerate any, that means you've done some, you know, human centipede level stuff. That, uh, I mean, if you're too weird for Mysterium, Let's talk. <laughs> and I don't think the key word is weird. Mm -hmm. Because we... I've, oh, my God. Everyone's weird Everybody's weird. Everybody's weird. It's just... It's certain quirks people carry that just, you know... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Are you serious about this? <laughs> it's like, Are you okay? Uh, uh, I don't think you need Mysterium. I think you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> I can give you a few. All right. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Because, like, that's another thing I've observed about it. Like, do you ever have clients complain that you're too dark? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely! Wow. <laughs> All right. And how do you handle that? Uh, okay. So even before I uh, came out as a reader, I've been experiencing that. Um, Discrimination. As, e even when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> when I was in elementary, there was a teacher who would put me in the chapel and then <laughs> basically tell me, "Pray, repent for your sins." Like what? What did I do <laughs> this time? <laughs> and then in high school. I had someone literally throw a Bible at me. Oh, did you catch it and throw it back? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been great. And I almost got kicked out of uh, my sophomore year because there was a teacher. She wasn't even my teacher mm -hmm. who said that I was um, an antichrist, a Satanist. Um, yeah, and even in the community of mm -hmm. um, readers and healers, um, yeah, people did deem me too dark, too intimidating. What too exactly scary. does that mean? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't fully get that. I mean, it's like, do you condemn a, a pepper for being spicy? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're too spicy. You need to be more sweet. You, know, you take if you want pepper, you eat the pepper. If you don't want it, don't eat it. Exactly. It's but you don't condemn. You're too red and too hot, and stop being that way. Exactly. That's so just weird. Hey, Kulas, thanks, brother. Sugar Baron, hello, Sir Rob. Draw a card, love card for me. Sure, this is for you. Take charge. You know what I mean. Go places with it. Really be the alpha male or female. Uh, Angeline Bautista for my application. What you put into it is what you get out of it. So be very careful with that. Let's see what else we got here. Shira Guevara, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Uh, Rayu Asami, um, boyfriend po 2019. Yeah, I think it's going to be looking good. You just need to spend more time together. We're back at 20 people. Angeline Bautista, thank you very much for tuning in. Kulas, my brother from another mother. I miss you and it's good to see you again. Okay, uh, so like, did you ever think once that like, maybe they're right or did you always just show them the, the, the three finger salute? Like, read between the lines. <laughs> yeah, um... Actually, for most of my life, I tried to fit the mold that people were trying to put me in. Uh -huh. um, you know, be, being... Um, I, I tend to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. um, and at one point, I tried to... F I, try I really did try. Some people think that I'm just uh, resistant to expectations and change. But no, really. Mm. Um, I just think that... Especially for myself. I know for, my, I know for a fact that I'm not a terrible person and of course for you're, me, not. you're a wonderful person um uh, here's actually some advice i do tend to give my clients i'd rather 
have um, people hate me for me mm-hmm. rather than hate myself for the rest of my life. That's trying true. to please other people. That's true. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people would want uh, a fish to be like a monkey. But you know what happens if you try to make a fish like a monkey? It will die. Because it's just not supposed to do that. So guys, just loosen up on the on the judgmentalism out there. Um, this is for Melody Catalan. Hi, Rob. Please pick a card for me. Thank you. Three of Wands Reverse. You're going to be traveling somewhere soon. Having some celebrations. Things to look forward to. Maybe a marriage or something like that. More power to you. E.K. Bumang, Bumang Lang. Sorry, guys. If I'm butchering your last names, it's not on purpose. Uh, general reading. Okay. Death. Oh, scary. It means that there will be changes. <laughs> some people, dark. some people, no, oh, no, it's the darkest card in the deck. Would you believe most people are scared of the tarot just because of the ten of, the, just because of the devil and death? Absolutely. <laughs> that that's why there are some decks. Like, for example, this one. This mm-hmm. is why I use this. I'm, I'm not gonna look for the the card, but the death card here is sort of a, a woman with wings and then it says transformation oh, yeah, yeah there you go you just fluffed it up <laughs> no but the funny thing is they think that if they take out those cards they're taking out the bad cards yeah the ten of swords in the tower is still there it's like if i saw the death and the devil in the tower i wouldn't be tripping i'd be like okay you're gonna get a different contract rufa may kodog love card for me and my boyfriend oh the lovers things look really good for you rufa may more power to that one hey guys and girls do you want to have a private reading with me from anywhere around the world it's available. All you have to do is send us a message. 0916-551-1824. And tonight, I'd like to invite the next person to call via Viber or IMO. 928 If you call us on Viber or IMO or Skype V81 Radio, you can ask me and Roland personally live on the air a question. Anything you'd like and we will answer it live on the air. Once again, let's call us up on Viber. 928 or Viber or Skype V81 Radio, Shira Guevara. Please pick a card for my career. Thank you. Ace of Pentacles. Um, Ace of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles reversed, meaning don't do it for the money, do it for, for the fulfillment and swing for the fences. All right, it's 8 35 on the clock. We're going to go on another break, but the Facebook Live line is still going to be open. I have the honor of being joined in a, to a. <laughs> I have the honor of being joined tonight by the ever so talented Miss Roland Carlos here on Mysterium After Dark. Take it away, Harry. Enjoy music all day long, streaming worldwide. The future of radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Transource Media is dedicated to provide reliable, affordable, fast, and efficient services to our clients. We offer services that have been strategically organized to produce high-quality results. We are focused on providing essential assistance such as, but not limited to transcription services, virtual assistance, web designing, audio, video, post-production, and voiceovers. Transource Media, your most reliable partner for all your business needs. For more information, visit transsourcemedia.com. Gusto mo ba na lagi kang protektado? HD CCTV camera ba ang hanap mo? Panikuradong 3K security services ang para sa iyo. Authorized wholesaler of HIK Fission 3K SS 3K Security Solutions. Tawagan sila sa 046-970-6315 or 0929-343-1636. At para sa mga kababayan natin abroad, magtanong at i-email sila sa 3K SS Trading at gmail.com OTK hanapin ang kanilang Facebook page at facebook.com slash 3KSS Trading 3KSS 3K Security Solutions 3K Security Solutions Matatagpuan sa number 306 Aguinaldo Highway Panapaan 7 Bacoor, Cavite, Philippines Tunog Pinoy Tatap Pinoy Streaming Worldwide The Future of Radio This is your All Hits All Pinoy Internet Radio Station This is V81 Radio V81 Radio
you know what? Um, we had a really interesting question on the chat line on um, what's it called? Um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Facebook Live about a healer who sells secrets to other people. That's just the worst kind of juju. You Absolutely. know what I mean? You, as a reader, you are obliged to respect the confidentiality of all the people who come to you for guidance. And if you're going to use that as a means of leverage, I mean, this is where the real Rob will come out. You're the worst kind of scum. I mean, you come to, to, to me in vulnerability and openness. The least I can do is protect the things that you share with me. But if I'm going to use this information just to make myself look better, or if I'm going to sell you out, or if I'm even going to blackmail you, that's just wrong. That's just all. I mean, like, Roland, what do you think about that? Um, first of all, it's ultimately selfish. Okay? Yeah. And um, you're not just harming, you know, I mean, you are harming the client, but more than that, you're harming the entire industry along mm, with you. I agree. Yeah, that's just bad. Yeah. Hi, Ren. Nice to see you. This is your card. Uh, yeah, we have a call? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, well, well, we'll answer this for Renz. Uh, be, put the uh, resources into it. Be willing to invest into it. People might say that your new career is not going to get any money, but uh, it will. You will prove people wrong. Okay. Renz Mark, Jai Cruz, Rica Frente. Please pick a card for me in doing new business this April. Now, remember, April is a good month to start because that's going to be after Mercury Retrograde. Strength Reverse showing to me. You still need to study a bit more about it. Now, Renz Mark, if you call on Skype, or on Viber, we can answer the questions for you live. Yeah, more details. Um, that's awesome, Sir Rob. What's awesome? <laughs> okay, uh, Kathleen, pick a card, Sir Rob. No. <laughs> Please and thank you. There you go. Come on. Please and thank you. If Evil Fair was here, he'd cut you off. They have a big following, but I worry the people that for the people I see this person. You know, Melissa Love. That's true. I mean. You'd be surprised how many people are stupid. Like, you heard about what happened in Brazil, right? Absolutely. With uh, John of God. That, like, oh, gosh. I mean, I'd like to say guilty until proven. I mean, innocent until proven guilty. But when 300 people are throwing accusations of uh, <laughs> something against you, you're going to have a hard time disproving that unless it's one huge conspiracy. So, boys and girls, um, be very careful. Be very careful. Not all of the people out there who pose as messianic figures or not are that okay uh danica legrosa card for me please career and love you need to speak your mind danica the world needs to hear more about you so that was a pretty heavy topic my, um hi ate uh, <laughs> my sister's on um she's watching cool why don't you start a, f a watch party on your wall just <laughs> click on the post and just click watch party. It's going to invite your friends to uh, be part of the show. Hey, if you guys want, I'm going to, okay, you're going to get a special treat tonight. If you call us up via Viber or IMO 0928-069-9938, you can ask a question live on the air of me and of Roland. Really? That's just like, hey, people pay money for readings with both of us. So if you really want to take advantage of it tonight, tonight's the night to do it. Uh, Emily Florendo, card about my career. You have the five of wands reversed, meaning you're not being as competitive as you should be. You need to be a bit more aggressive. Now, what do you think about that in the industry? Competitiveness in the industry. Okay. So people tend to uh, have a misconception with competitiveness yeah that they sort of think that in order to be competitive you have to step on other people yeah but really it's just about rising above your own expectations of yourself that's part of it another thing about being competitive too is this it's not about saying what's bad in roland it's just about saying what's good in me if i'm gonna spend money time and, ne and energy you know promoting what's bad in roland then i'm not doing anything for me but if i just say this is good for me this is how I do things. This is why I'm good. Then people will be convinced on that and it doesn't hurt anyone. So promote yourself. Don't dispromote somebody else. Melissa Love is asking, is there anything I could do to send protection and positive energy to these people? Uh, Melissa Love, I would highly suggest you send us a private message about that because if it's a lot of people, you may be dealing with a very powerful collective energy. And if a lot of people believe in it, what's going to end up happening is it's going to become what we call a thought form or a, uh, a Gregor. And it's not going to want to die. So send us a pr private for that one. Read my career, please. Thanks. Jane Guno. Fire away, Roland. Please draw a card. What did Roland get for tonight? Uh, you got the hangman. Hangman. Reverse, reverse so, meaning? 
uh, you may want to take a look at your situation in a different perspective mm -hmm. because you might see some angles that you didn't see before. There you go. Wow, somebody watching from Pangasinan. That is so cool. Okay, Isabel Bernardo. Hi, Rob. Please pick a card for me. Thank you. You have the Seven of Wands, meaning it's all about boundaries, learning when to say no to people. That's very important, don't you think? Absolutely. Saying no. Because like, okay, was somebody calling? Yes. All right, cool. We have a caller tonight. That is so awesome. Let's see here. Okay, wait, oh, we are waiting. All right, good evening, Jem. Hello, hi. This is Jairus. Oh, hi, Jairus. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello, hi. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome to the show, Jairus. What question can we both yes, answer for you? I have a question. We're opening our second business this April. Uh-huh. And what do you think about the business? Okay, I'll draw one for you, Jairus. Yeah, you have the Four of Swords, and it shows to me here that you really need to double time on it because if you really wanted to take off don't spare any uh any resources do everything you can and by you mm -hmm. know how do i say running fast at the beginning that's going to really give you a head start so really push at, especially this april then may and june you can kind of slow down but then aside from that um blitz at the beginning so that how do i say you have a head start of anybody working with you now second question you can ask is of roland right roland Hello, Roland. Yes. Hello. Yes, uh, we're engaging to a new kind of business this April, and uh, I have hesitation today mm -hmm. if we'll be uh, doing a good uh, good start for the business because the, uh, the the owner of the building doesn't want us to uh, to to put uh, our design uh, signage outside the building. So, what do you think about the business? Are we going to do something good for the business? Okay, so the card that I drew for you is accelerated motion. Um, related to sort of setting your boundaries, you also need to know when to set set your foot down. You know, this is your business and you got to work with people, for example, for the, with the owner of the building. But um, there are ways to meet halfway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in, Jairus. It's an honor to have you. All right, cool. We actually had a caller. That's very awesome. Okay, some people asking some interesting questions on the chat line. Sacha, good morning from Chile, Canada. Please pick a card for me. Would really appreciate it. You have the Seven of Cups reversed, meaning focus all your energies into one action. Don't overextend yourself. Martina Bye Bye asks, is it necessary for us to memorize the meanings of each card or we can just read it intuitively? Answer this question, Roland. <laughs> I don't think that you need to memorize the meanings, but mm -hmm. it does help to know the keywords. There you go. Not only that, um, build your own relationship with the cards, Martina. Don't just memorize. Because anybody can learn the tarot by just m memorizing, but that doesn't make you a tarot reader. That just makes you some dude who memorized a lot of stuff. Uh, Marvin Chua, good evening, sir. I'll please pick a card for me. Thank you. You have the Hermit reversed. Find the right people to work with you because you can't do it alone. And since somebody called in, if you call us again, 0928069 call us from anywhere around the world via Vibe and IMO and you can ask me and Roland the questions anything you'd like ideally don't ask me and Roland the same question you know what I mean <laughs> you can ask whatever you want this is part of our how do I say um, giving back to the community and who is that who just like was that Mao <laughs> it looks like it was Mao Satya thank you for tuning in and like I said if you guys are interested in consulting with me about what we do or asking questions about the show or even having a private reading from anywhere around the world send me a message because we want to work with you it's quarter to nine on the clock my gosh see show just went fast yeah that was an interesting question though about like the whole herd mentality of people you know believing things and you know just one of the stupidest things i saw was actually outside of our out of our co um community as a whole out of our practice whereas hmm? what's that uh oh <laughs> somebody's calling another person's call uh, oh no <laughs> coming in from skype yeah i think it is all right now um hi mal so is he is he tuned in or is he locked in did you get him hello good evening is your name robert good evening. oh good evening okay i just have a question oh fire I away just have a question uh I just want to know if what will be the uh, what will be what will happen to my career this year. Oh, career this year—that's a beautiful one. I'll let Roland be the first to answer that. Roland, please take it away. 
per career for you a triumph and success okay as long as you stay focused on your goal it's gonna take you places <laughs> more power to you there more power. you can ask me a question now anything you'd like just no dates of death and no lottery numbers Okay, actually, I received an offer mm -hmm. abroad, yeah. and I am confused of if I will push to that offer or not, because I also have another option to pursue with my further studies here in the Philippines. Okay. All right, let's look it up. All right, going so I'm choosing between the two that I have. Let's look between going abroad and staying here. I actually think, but this is going to sound weird, I actually would recommend you stay here because you could make your yourself a bigger fish. If you go into the bigger pond right now, you might get swallowed by something else. So according to me, the two cards, between the two cards are true, the better option would really be for you to stay here and pursuing your studies here so that you can refine whatever it is you're doing and becoming more than you already are. Okay, thank you so much. More power to you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, man. Two people called in. It is so amazing. That's so amazing. People really love it. All right, so yeah, anyhow, so there was this one... Um, cult doomsday cult where this dude this pastor said uh the rapture was coming oh. the end of days and he said oh no the rapture is coming so he told his flock and this has just happened in 2000 in like 9 or 12 or something like that he told everybody that no oh, october something something the, the rapture is gonna happen mm -hmm. and it's the end so all of his believers they started donating all of their money to the church and giving away all their belongings and selling all of their their house and everything just basically just chucked everything out the window mm -hmm. they came and went no rapture <laughs> then a couple months later this pastor dude said no no i was wrong about the date it's going to happen two months from now they came and went nothing the church survived but what about the people who threw everything out the window their lives are now upside down so it shows you should always have a bit of grounding um I'm not going to talk about controversial topics like anti-vaxxing and stuff like that um, because I have some friends of mine who don't believe in vaccines. I have people who believe in vaccines. Um, I will not, uh, for just respect, I will not say what my opinion is on that. But sometimes I think we are a bit morally obligated to consider the safety of everyone else around Absolutely. us. So um, that being said, that ultimately being said... Uh, it's like one of those things. Like some people in the community, especially, and what I like about the people who do healings in Mysterium is that we will never use our healing abilities as a, as a substitute for medical, you know, uh, medical services. Like if you're having pneumonia and you can't breathe, I'm not gonna reiki it out of you. I'm gonna take you to the hospital where you can get treatment. And while you're getting treatment, I'm gonna do reiki to you. It augments, but it never ever substitutes. Just like me. It's like, don't come to me as a tarot reader expecting like everything I'm going to tell you is going to be law. You know what I mean? Everything can be changed. So just keep that in mind, boys and girls. There are, there are people in the industry who mm -hmm. would um, sort of impose their own beliefs. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I have met people who went as far as to say, oh, no, 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 don't, don't take those, med uh, don't take your medications, don't. Um, have this kind of treatment we can fix it with reiki i have met people like that and that's kind of dangerous i mean that, that's very dangerous it's like i think that there are some illnesses and some limitations that can be uh how do i say um how do i say augmented with energy healing mm -hmm. or crystal healing but i don't think that there's any that would uh completely substitute Absolutely. for medication like example i'm an asthmatic I practice Reiki. If I'm having an asthma attack, I will use the Reiki on myself until I can get my inhaler. <laughs> I will never say no. I don't need. I don't need it because you know I have my energy healing. That's the easiest way of end up, you know, ending up dead. <laughs> so you know, consider the safety of the people around you. I mean, it's there for a reason. It's it's fire and water. It's yin and yang. These things balance each other out. Um, it's just sad sometimes. People can just have such a herd mentality with things. You know, like yes. these people that just said, no, 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 I just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna s smoke this herb and it's gonna make all my illnesses Please, go away. It's like, essential oils. Uh, well, essential oils are actually cool. But they're not the fix for everything. Exactly. I mean, I use essential oils. They're great. But I mean, like if I, if I have the, if, if I have like Ebola, <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> not I'm gonna, not gonna <laughs> essential oils it out of my maybe system. Maybe you could try shot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. You never know. I might find a cure to Ebola with that. But that's yes, why I said, you have to consider the uh, people's, What's it called the peop the safety of everyone around you, yourself included. Know what to apply mm -hmm. for what thing. <laughs> All right, come on, call us up zero nine two eight zero six nine 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 three eight Skype IMO Viber. 
anyone who's tuning in right now, this is the few times you can get readings from two very, very talented diary readers from anywhere around the world. Our Jordan P. Santos, you can ask questions here. I have no idea who that is. Mao. nice to see you, Mao. Nice to know that you're in Cotabato. Uh, someone just called me Rolando. Oh, so, no, <laughs> Rolando is... You mean Rolanda. Uh, Rolanda. She's not a Rolando, okay? <laughs> Rolanda is a lady, okay? So we were sp- Am I, though? <laughs> oh, uh, asan kayo? <laughs> So that being said, yeah, we're having a great time tonight. We're just pretty much doing this Mercury Retrograde special of Mysterium After Dark slash Tarot Thursdays on a Monday night because there will be no Tarot Thursdays this Thursday because I'm going to be taking a day off. I'm Much needed. I'm a, uh, <laughs> literally speaking, I mean, the continuum was with Alex was great, but organizing and all it's like you know when you bring in the Beatles or you bring in the rolling stones the concert is great but everything you need to do to set it up is not great at all <laughs> it's very very tiring that's my friend who just tuned in that is so cool mao mao do you have any questions of the three of us of the two of us we will not talk about the third one <laughs> there is a third person here also for you guys who are interested we are op- we've just opened another ta- batch of the intro to the tarot certification course uh, Sunday nights, it's still not too late to tune to join that program. It's every Sunday night at 6 30. Uh, 6 p.m. Yeah? I would highly recommend for people to enroll in that, even mm-hmm. if you've already been reading tarot, because it's just going to teach you how to be your own version of a tarot reader. Okay? Exactly. And another thing, too, is this March 31st, we are opening another batch of Reiki Level 1. Um, Johan Gorg Faust, Sir Rob, pick a card for me. Thanks in advance. Sure. Johan Georg Faust, two of coins reversed, meaning that choose very carefully between practicality and fulfillment. That's what I can tell you right now. Hi, Ellie. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go on another break in five minutes. No, I'm not male. Someone just asked, are you male? <laughs> so tell them. W- would you like to know? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Oh what my did God. you like to know? Guys, leave Roland alone. You might end up waking up dead. <laughs> okay, <so laughs> part body of your body is dead. Micah Mac. Sir Rob, pick a card for me. Good job offer this month. Let's look. You might need to make some sacrifices, Micah Mac. Keep that in mind. Okay, Jehan Maransala. Card for me, love. I'll give you large love only. Learn to listen. If you're learning to listen, the things you need will come your way. Tuning in tonight. Hey, guys, you want to sponsor the show. We want to have you Mysterium After Dark Monday nights here on V81 The Radio. Let your business be heard all around the world. And I'd also like to congratulate the winners of the Captain Marvel promo. Did you awesome. hear what happened? Yeah, like three lucky people. One lucky individual walked away with three copies of my book um, and three tickets to the show. And two others got two tickets to the show. So thanks for tuning in, for sharing, making noise. You're always trying to, you know... Uh, expand our horizons. Marine De La, Gadi De La Cruz, Health 2019 card, please. I see you coming back to Metro Manila. <laughs> I see you being active in a very political arena and thus your health both emotionally and mentally will be flushed down the toilet. <laughs> Kidding around. Be careful who you trust, Mao. Okay. Uh, Guys, what? call 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 the hotline. Don't call me. Yeah, don't call. Uh, Roland's <laughs> so, not gonna, someone's uh, calling me. They, they cancel it, eh? <laughs> you have to learn. There you go. There you go. Yeah. If you guys want to call us up and talk to us, don't call Roland now. Call our 0928-069-9938 and you can ask, ask a question via Viber or IMO from anywhere around the world or via Skype V81 Radio. Ian Rafael Estelor, card for me. Thank you so much. Sure, Ian. Um, you might have to ask a favor of somebody who will be willing to help you but they're not going to do it unless you ask. So keep that in mind. Wowie. Okay, how about this? Draw a card for the upcoming elections. Oh, yeah, why? one card. Yeah, I wanted to put you on the spot. Mm-hmm. Someone's still calling me. You want me to answer it? What do you want? Okay, so rejoice and celebration reversed, which is the three of cups reversed. Okay, so now. it's not going to be that it's, fun. It's not. It's going to be a fiasco. <laughs> Fiasco, yay! <laughs> All right, you guys remember to vote wisely. Vote with your conscience. There's no right or wrong candidate. There's just the content candidates that you believe in. <laughs> They're still calling. My God, it's like what they expect. I mean, if you're f- gonna take me out to dinner, then why not? Oh, there you go. It's the funny <laughs> thing about it. Um, they actually know you're on the show. <laughs> it's just like, hey, can I be on the show too? A <laughs> 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 live Marie. Yes, please. I would love a card. Who are you? 
<laughs> Fine, here. The Wheel of Fortune reverse, meaning to me that you're going to make your own luck this month. So think about that. Wow, Mercury Retrograde hitting us with all these sidewinders right now. Wow. Do you play games? What kind of video games do you play? Uh, 2019, I'm still playing Skyrim. Skyrim! <laughs> and Witcher 3. I love Witcher 3. Myla Guerrero, nice to see you. So what, what class do you play in Skyrim? Are you like a, are you like the owner of Winterhold now? <laughs> I, I sort of... I mean, no, no, no. You're the head of the Dark Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. I am! <laughs> I knew it! I you am. took over the Dark Brotherhood! Of course I did. <laughs> uh, there's some dilemma raising games, uh, s quests in Skyrim by far. Absolutely. Even in Witcher 3. I mean, they're sort of the same. I've never gotten to play Witcher 3 yet, unfortunately. There is one game that's a shoot 'em up that I, that, that I played, but uh -huh. it had a very strong spiritual theme to it, and I really liked it. And it's old. It's actually uh, Far Cry 3. Oh. And yeah. that was really like existentially spiritualistic about like this this yuppie white kid privileged mm -hmm. white kid who gets stranded on an island and has to like become a warrior mm -hmm. and like kill people and find a warrior within and so i was like damn this is a good good storyline like when it ends you're actually sad you're like it's over <gasps> angie sarmiento of course i will draw a card for you and that's the page of cups reversed meaning that there might be somebody Who's a bit emotionally dependent and clingy on you that's going to enter your life? Um, I don't know how they're going to enter. They might be a staff or something like that. Or they might be romantically inclined. Just be careful how you handle them. Gia Caribbean, current projects, please. Sure. You got to know what you want, darling. What is your overall objective? What do you want to gain in this world? El Larena. Rob. Card for me. Pick, please. Thank you. You're the man. Two of Wands showing to me, you better have your travel documents in order because you're going to be going places. That's great. So Skyrim. So you're the head of the... the I, I, uh, at first I said Winter. Oh, no. She runs the Dark Brother. It's <laughs> awesome. Merc Retro this time is playing cute tricks. Yes, it is, Mal. Very funny. Thanks for pointing out the obvious. But as Harry is taking a photo, we're going to go on our last break. So we're on the air right now with the ever so talented Roland Carlos here on Mysterium After Dark. We're now transferring to the live cast. So see you there during the break. Annoying music all day long. Streaming worldwide. The future of radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high quality, yet budget friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, copywriters, and graphic artists, we can help you build your podcast from planning, post production, and platform submission. Using only cutting edge software and studio equipment, we are here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send us an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call us at 209-505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. Ito na ang programa para sa inyo. Para sa mga OFW. Programong tutulong at tutugon sa inyong mga lungkot at problema. Para sa mga OFW. Programang mag-aalis ng homesick sa mga bayaning gaya ninyo. Para sa mga OFW. Sa iba't ibang dakuman ng mundo, maghahatid ng tuwa at saya sa bawat Pilipino. Para sa mga OFW. Maglilingkod para sa OFW. OFW Online. OFW Online. OFW Online. Mapapakinggan tuwing Martes at Merkules alas 7 ng gabi at tuwing Sabado at Linggo alas 3 ng hapon. Kasama sina Cap Marvin at Papa Tolitz. OFW Online. OFW Kaya mga kababayan, tutok na. Dito lang yan sa V81 Radio. 
Kahit saya sa mga Pinoy Mga kantang tatak Pinoy Kahit nasan ka man Kami ay mapapakinggan Streaming worldwide The future of radio In Manila, California And Hong Kong This is V81 Radio Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya Dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa Tiyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa stretch of Mysterium After Dark, and tonight we have the honor of being joined by Roland de Carlos. I think your last name is spelled with a K. <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> okay, um, St. Luke's QC, so why don't you pass by? Um, yeah, so that being said, uh, we are actually going to be spending the last 30 minutes reading tarot, so if you want to tune in, no more talk, no more garbage, just keep asking the questions, and we will answer the cards for you, right? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sir Rob, you're the best. I will study tarot with you soon. Thanks again. I will hold you to that L. I think you've been saying that for some time now. <laughs> it's really the ones who show up that, you know, that really make a difference. My hair all messed up. Yeah, it is. Shit. <laughs> okay, so if you're tuning in, last hour's to half hour stretch is going to be about, all about asking questions. Q&A. Tarot, tarot, tarot. Just ask whatever you want. Want to ask what to have for breakfast? Like, what should I have for breakfast tomorrow? The world. Hell yeah. I'm going to a buffet. <laughs> oh, tomorrow's Tuesday. Actually, you know who I'm seeing? I'm seeing the great grandma of Slytherin. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yes. I won't mention her name on the air, but mm -hmm. then, Mamita, you know who you are. <laughs> and then we all look up to you and we're going to have a nice, interesting talk tomorrow. So after I come out of my tomb, because I've noticed that when I wake up in the morning, at the first like hour or two, I'm still like this vampire who woke up after like ten thousand years of <laughs> sleeping. And, like, I don't want to move. That's with me. First thing in the morning, I don't want to like have to move. Oh, get up! Let's go. We have to go here. I hate mm. that. So if you make me do that, <laughs> I'm gonna be really grouchy all day. What about you? When you wake up in the morning, what are you like? I'm not a morning person. Yeah, neither is he. There's, there is. There's too much sunlight. <laughs> Going back to sleep. <laughs> not really, because like um, I don't mind. It, it's not really about being a morning person or being a, a, about like an evening person. It's just that I don't operate quickly when I wake up. 
I need time to I need time to like you know jump start my system and I just need to just veg a bit mm. I need to like look at my phone I need to listen to music and then I need to get that first cup of coffee in and once it's in then I'm like okay I'm ready for the world's BS but then like you know that's why I hate early morning trips anywhere mm-hmm. it just God takes everything out of me like I was I'm taking this wonderful program right now with a bunch of wonderful people really really great group of people but the thing is they're the classes we have with them it's like once a month all the way in Makati in AIM mm-hmm. and they started exactly 8 o'clock so to get there from <laughs> King's Landing <laughs> I have to join the night's watch and wake up before the sun comes up just to be there in time I mean it's worth it the program is just amazing but yeah it better be damn amazing because if not I'm not waking up at 5 in the morning for mm-hmm. it but yeah it's, like, it's just something with me unlike Sarah who has this, this gift that she could wake up and just go straight to cleaning and fixing things me I'm like <laughs> so like you're an evening person right yeah so what time do you end up going to sleep it's like as the sun comes up you run to your tomb and like lock the door <laughs> that's actually true I, 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 I mean mine is the tomb but uh-huh. I do sleep in the morning during uh-huh. sunrise um, yeah <laughs> you know what I'll share with you a funny story uh, since nobody's asking any questions on the chat line um, this guy is the last 20 minutes to ask questions then we're gonna go off the air and through the tarot, I mean. Um, I remember when I was doing my study on demonic possession. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, that's by far the scariest freaking topic to sk- study. And it's just, it's engaging, but it's terrifying. As in, like, you always are looking over your shoulder, like, what was that? <laughs> and this stupid me, I would, like, start reading about it late at night, mm-hmm. like, nine in the evening. And I would just read and read and read and read. And... If, even if I was tired, I couldn't mm-hmm. go to sleep because it's like, okay, it's like 3 in the morning and you're reading about demonic possession. Good luck to that. So I would literally wait until I see the crack of dawn. <laughs> oh, the sun's out. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why I was like that, but uh, that was just one of my uh, early day moments of mine. <laughs> Creepy as hell. That's pretty much everyone right now with the whole Manila encounters. Really? Yeah, yeah, actually, um, that, I find that cute. Whoever started that, that's pretty uh. amazing. Like, I actually contributed to some of the Manila encounters. Great. Like I said, that like, did you know that there was a coffee shop that a witch, a wizard, a half Encanto, and even a God of Thunder's avatar they would go to in the Loyola Heights? Mm-hmm. But they would never talk to each other. They would just sit and have their coffee. Hint, hint. I wonder what coffee shop that is. <gasps> I know it's not the one. That's not where we met, Kanina. Really, nobody on the chat line has any questions? Seriously? Nobody wants to ask us anything? <sighs> They're going to comment once we're done. Yeah, let's take one of the last few minutes. All right. All right. I'm going to ask you to draw a card for me then, Roland. Okay. Um, okay. I have a question with regards to my aspirations as a writer. Will What can I... Eh, sorry. Uh, ah. um, will I ever get published? Or what do I need to do in order to get published? She gives me a funny look. You're screwed. <laughs> Knight of Wands. Okay. Um... Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't overthink it because you know you're not gonna get anything done overthinking about what you could do about it. You know, you're, there's there's time and place for fine tuning. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, how about this one? And this is a very important one, so take this one very seriously. And I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this. Sarah and I have been talking about having another child. Please, it better be a good reading. <laughs> What'd you get? What does that mean? <laughs> Three of swords. Um, I, I'm inclined to say don't be too emotional about the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that don't be emotionally attached to it, but maybe there's a lot of processing mm-hmm. and thinking over things um, to take place. Mm-hmm. So sort of the opposite of when you're writing, where it's just, you know, do it, mm-hmm. think about it later. This one... Um, maybe, maybe uh, let it brew a bit more. All right, yeah. so just go with the flow of things. That's cool. Thank you for that one. All right, now since nobody is asking questions on the chat line anymore, all right. Um, that being said, what are some things to look forward to with you? Where can they find you for tarot readings and consultations? Okay, 
Um, I'm mostly active on Instagram, but both on Instagram, Facebook, and my WordPress blog. You can mm-hmm. find me at Rare Kindling. Rare Kindlings it is. That sounds like a lot of fun. And where do you do your tarot readings out of? Like, example, um, do you do it all the way out of Alabang or something? Mm-hmm. Or Okay. Um, I do both online and personal face-to-face readings. For locations, I mostly focus around Quezon City. Mm-hmm. But um, I do have a frequently asked questions segment on my um, social media. So if you have any other questions, you're most likely going to find the answers there. Okay, Abby Coladilia is asking a good question. What do I have to be cautious about this Mercury retrograde? And you need to be very careful who you trust because not everybody has your best interest in mind. What about you, Roland? What do you have to say about Abby? Abby. Okay. You also have the three of swords. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in relation to that, you know, um, watch over yourself and be careful with not necessarily the people, but the environment that you place yourself in. Okay, there you go. So don't do anything stupid or foolish. Don't allow yourself to be put in harm's way because harm will necessarily come to you. Okay, it is exactly 9.15 on the clock. And we have 15 minutes left on the show, but... It just seems to me that nobody wants to talk to us anymore. Like, it's horrible. Don't I'm be so afraid sad. of me. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I'm so sad to that. Yeah, again, I don't think people are afraid of you. It's just that they're <laughs> probably doing other things right now. Yeah, but then, okay, here's another thing I'm going to tell you. Um, have you ever had a client that you really didn't want to let go of? And But they, let's say they went separate ways. And if so, what happened? Uh, you mean if I lost them? You lost them. They left. You really enjoyed them. But then they just fell off the grid. I can't say that I've actually experienced them you know, disappearing, mm-hmm. but I have had clients who, you know, we start out great and then they come back to me months later mm-hmm. um, and they sort of just found themselves lost. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I feel like as a reader, I sometimes uh, ask myself, was it something that I said in the previous reading? Could I have done better? Um, so that they could have been uh, in a better situation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I haven't really lost anyone. Yeah, because that's one thing I've observed that like um, what a lot of for all for all of you who are like starting the tarot out there, don't expect many of your clients to be like regulars, as in that they come back every month on the month and you know they want to be around you because a lot of people still take this whole practice as a whole. As like a trip lang thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, whatever, okay. okay. Um, rarely will you find a client that would like want to be there every month on the month of their annual reading. I mean, like, heck, people, they don't even take checkups seriously. <laughs> Medical checkups, yes. you know, they don't they don't even take it that seriously. It's like, they'll do it more like when I need to do it, not when I, when, when I should do it. And as a result of that, um, it's the same with tire readings that like, don't be too attached to the presence of your clientele if they're there do it if they're not then um you know you'll find other people just remember when you do these readings be sure to always come from the semblance of joy uh because like believe it or not clients know they know for a fact when you don't want to give a reading they're like "Eh, that was kind of (laughs) bad and that's why it's very important for the for the clientele or for the readers to actually know when to draw limits because if they don't draw limits then then they're always going to give what we call negative tarot experiences. Now, okay, have has any of your clients ever had an NTE with you? Um, in a sense that they didn't get the answers that they wanted to hear. Uh huh. Okay. Um, because personally, for my reading style, um, I'm not gonna be harsh on you, but don't expect me to sugarcoat you. I'm not gonna give you a reading based on what you want to hear, no matter how many times you ask me to shuffle the deck and check it again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you actually get people who do that. It's like, oh, does this person love me? Not really. Look again. <laughs> it's just like you become an obnoxious of them, don't you think? Like, there was actually a time where I had a particular spread mm-hmm. and then the client was like, but what if this card is over here? <laughs> then that, what would that say? <laughs> I have actually, it actually, actually happened to me like I had one client of mine back in the day and um, she asked me one time, should she purchase this property? Mm-hmm. And all the cards that could have been bad came out. You had 10 of swords, 9 of swords. You had justice reversed the tower. And I was like, ma'am, please do not buy this property. 
please do not. And then she looked at me scrutinously and she was like, mm hmm. Check again. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure, go ahead, buy the property. You know what I mean? So, you know, sometimes, you know, those clients, clients who like, they just want you to agree with them. Yeah. Right? You know, it's just like, uh, they act like addicts at times. They act like they they know the answer themselves. They're just looking for their own validation. And that's true that a lot of times clients are just looking to be validated. But, uh, but yeah, you know, like um, they should learn to take your value at what it's worth. Yeah. Now, what's your worst NTE ever? Worst. As a reader. <laughs> um, actually, this wasn't with a client uh -huh. it was with a reader who asked me to read for them okay so um they 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 sort of put themselves on this pedestal like they developed their own style of reading and then they were like you know what um why don't you read for me so i did and then while i was reading um things came up and they were like no 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 that's not what it means <laughs> you know in my practice this isn't what this is what it means and i was internally thinking um, why don't you read for yourself if you're not going to listen to my reading? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like, there are those people, like, I, I tend to eyebrow certain people when they do that to me. That, like, they ask okay. me to read for them. And I have to tell them, if you want me to read for them, then shut the F up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. let me do what I have to do. And I'm like, okay, they ask me, you know, what, which, which course of action is best? This, this, or this? And I was like, I, I, put, I lay out the cards and then, oh, but you drew the three of swords. What does that mean? Like, Mm -hmm. Let me interpret this based upon how I'm feeling, okay? I'm not going to give you bad news. It's like, if you want to read for yourself, go right ahead. But if you don't, then if you want me to read for you, then shut up. It's like you do makeup, right? Yeah. Imagine yeah. trying to do makeup for a makeup artist. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you're putting that wrong. It's like, do you want me to do the makeup for you or can you do this by yourself? Not ego in the industry, I guess. It's just something we all need to le learn to live with. But then, like, aside from that, was there any like a client that you had that was like, oh, oh Lord? <laughs> um, generally, people who um, I mean, I I know some people do read what they call third party readings, mm -hmm. but I do find it like it's a pet peeve of mine when you come for a session with me and then you keep asking about other people mm -hmm. I, i'm here to read about you and then you come um so i have this friend who has an aunt who has a husband and who has a dog who <laughs> sold dog. to somebody who sold the dog to <laughs> us <laughs> that, that, that's a pet peeve of mine and then when i couldn't see anything um they would sort of be annoyed about mm -hmm. it because they feel like i'm not performing at my best so. mm -hmm. that's like similar to something that happened to me once where like um i had what we call the sandwich client and this this lady got blacklisted with me, and she asked me, said, um, "What does Jimbo think of me?" Mm -hmm. And then I drew some cards and said, "This guy, yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty into you. You know, he likes you. He's very fond of you. Blah blah blah." And then, okay, the next question she asked me was, "I had lunch with someone yesterday. What does he think of me?" And then I was like, "Oh, oh this guy, this guy's no good for you. I mean, he's he's pro he's trouble he's trouble he's problematic." She said, "Ha." I had lunch with Jimbo yesterday. I said, ah, oh, <laughs> God damn it. I was like, you know what? You, you're really pushing it here. Because I like to tell the clients out there that like, if you're going to enter a reading with malice, if you're going to enter just to test and size up the reader and to let them feel like, you know, they like, you know, just to want to prove them wrong, then you're going to F up the whole reading. Absolutely. And they're just going to F it all up. But if you enter the reading with an open heart and with the willingness to be told the message, then you'll get what you need to hear. Because like when I was still coming up, I was doing readings back in the day in Surendra. There used to be a Zohalat out there. Mm -hmm. God bless Zohalat for life. And um, I was blessed with the privilege of being the resident reader at Zohalat in the fort during like 2009. Well, no, 2008. So that was a very prime spot. And then I remember one day that these two girls came and then they both wanted a reading. The first girl was very enthusiastic about the reading. So like three, uh, 10 minutes into the reading, she's already crying. She's like, oh God, that's so true, blah, blah, blah. Then the next girl was a little bit different because I noticed even off the get-go, her body language was like, I don't want to be here. The whole time she was like, Tss. you know, like, and then at the end she said, you know what? Nothing you said held true. And then I was like, and why is that? I said, no, nothing you said held true. And I said, ma'am, do you really want to be here? I said, not really. You know, I'm just here just to follow my friend. Trip lang. I want a refund. I'm like, the service is done. Okay, you don't get a refund. And if you want a refund, you can ask my boss for it. And she'll gladly show you how to get a refund. And lo and behold, my boss was very supportive. I mean, she wasn't giving any refund. But um, you'll know 
that there's something wrong in the reading because there it's like you're not connecting because they're not letting you connect Absolutely. and the minute that that happens mm, i usually if i see that there's not a connection at the beginning i'd say is there something wrong are you uncomfortable ma'am sir maybe you don't want to be here i would rather do that than give them a reading and let them tell the world oh that reading was crap mm-hmm. right so you have to kind of like you know cover your bases at times so 9.22 on the clock, and it's been an interesting evening having Roland around with us. And uh, although the, um, tu- the tuners came bit by bit, somebody put an unhappy face in the channel. So who did, angry. Who's angry at us? I know that's your problem, not ours. <laughs> if you guys are interested in having a private reading with Roland, you can contact her at the Mysterium Hotline 0916-551-1824. She does readings via Skype and at the Mysterium Learning Center by appointment. Okay, that's again by appointment. Okay, but before we wrap up the show, do you have any parting words you'd like to give to the viewers and watchers out there? Um, well, this goes for any, everyone in general and particularly calling for those who are interested in being part of the Mysterium community. Um, learn to embrace yourself. Okay, that goes a long way. All right, that being said and done, this is Rob Rubin with from Mysterium Philippines telling everybody out there who tuned in tonight, thank you so very much for the privilege and honor of being able to serve you tonight. Tune in next week at night at 7.30 for another interesting and life-changing episode of Mysterium After Dark. Harry, take it away. Play music all day long, yes. streaming worldwide. The future of radio. It's your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station. This is V81.